I picked up the book in August of 2000 and just fell madly in love with it. The author, Alexander McCall Smith, found this character that he had fallen in love with when he saw a woman in Botswana running after a chicken. And he just thought that I need to create a character around her. I'm going to open a detective agency. Really? We ummed and ahed about what to do with it for a long time. In the end, we decided to make it for television because we felt that it would reach a wider audience. And there's something about the storytelling in the books that is quite slow. It's very sort of digressive. I think what's interesting is that it takes the book as a starting point and then develops out from that. So I think this whole series actually enriches it in some kind of way. You have come to the right place, Happy Papetsi. This is definitely a case for the number one ladies detective agency. The feeling of a lot of this series is, it, it, it's a comedy, broadly, a, a human comedy. You know, the first two weeks when we got here, oh, there was not even a single client. I had to cut my assistant's hair 20 times just to look busy. At the end, he was bald, <laughs> but very cute. <laughs> this has got such a kind of fresh, positive, spin on it is just about respect for other people. I think it's a day-to-day it's a -day story about um, a special woman. She has been taught by her father, who's, who was a wonderful man and a wonderful father to her, all kinds of skills that she'll find useful as a detective. People are coming to her to help them find, um, find their dog, help them find out if their wife is cheating on them or not, help to find out anything just to help. And this is the way she makes her, her living as well as her life. This is you, is it not? Kissing my husband? I am playing a part to demonstrate your husband is unfaithful. How dare you kiss my Kremlin, you thief! I think this sort of batch of extraordinary characters is really what appeals to everybody. And really, over the course of the series, you'll see all of these characters not trying to fit in, but trying to make the most of their lives as who they are. These are human beings who have had, who have faced their problems, and yet they are forging a, a positive path. Can I ask why a fine woman like yourself wants to become a detective? Because I love my country, Botswana. It's hard when you, you look at Jill Scott to realize that anybody else could have even been considered for this role. I think the great thing with her is she, she's playing this very warm, vulnerable, likable, decent human being, and that is what Jill is as well. Thank you, Ma. I read the book first, and I thought, what a brave woman. I love that about her, that she's just simple to be outside of the box. I'm of traditional build, and many men like it that way. She's a detective in Botswana who is a revolutionary. One of the most fascinating things about Mara Motswe's character, um, given that she is this admirable, independent woman, is that she's come out of uh, an abusive relationship with a jazz musician, No Makoti. Notice here, look. Not Makoti is Maromotswe's ex-husband. He is fiery, he's abusive, and he's everything she could ever desire in a man. He's sort of symptomatic of what's wrong sometimes in Africa. I think he's one of those men who doesn't really respect women. Uh, he's a bit aggressive. In fact, he's, he's responsible for the death of his own baby when he beats up Ma. Maromotswe in the pre the story you see. The last time? He spoke to me. It was with his fist and the buckle of his belt. The last time we were at a funeral, it was for the baby I lost because of that beating. Note Mokoti uh, comes from, a, if you like, the bad boy school of romance. He's um, not necessarily the nicest uh, person in the world. But then she meets someone who is much like her father, a decent man, a man who stands on his own two feet, who is essentially good. A new customer, a, a Chinese gentleman, very grateful that I'd repaired his car, dirty spark plugs, nothing really, gave me this perfume for my wife. And I, not having one, thought of you. Oh, thank you, Ra. 
J.O.B. Mataconi is a great man. He's a man who has a talents and he uses his talents to help with the orphanage. He's just what we need in the world, more of these guys. But you perhaps met him here then. One of the reasons why I wanted to play Maramonte was because there was this innocent love. He loves her because she is her. And he will do anything to show that. I have typed a report. Very good. The case of Happy Bapetsi and the dubious daddy. No developments, no leads, no progress. Endless cups of bush tea. Mama Kutsi is a perfectionist. She does not consider herself an attractive woman. She went to the Botswana Secretarial College, and uh, she is the only graduate to have made 97%, which is a major thing for her. And um, she, she really holds on to that, because it's the one thing that she's really very proud of. Just forgive me if we are disturbed at some point by a visitor. I'm expecting a young secretary this morning. Apparently, she achieved the highest ever result from the Botswana College of Secretarial and Office Skills. 96%. 97%. In fact, Mama Kuti is Mara Motswe's prodigy, basically. And she's been overlooked because she's not the kind of woman who wears a short skirt. When, when someone says secretary, a, an image springs to mind of, of someone who in is... In a tight skirt who will very soon be disgracing herself under a desk with her boss in ways that only God knows how she can still look at herself in a mirror. Ugh. Not quite. Now, BK, the um, gay hairdresser who runs the Last Chance Hair Salon uh, next door to the number one ladies' detective agency, is a character who isn't in the novel. When you think about the BK character, he adds huge comic relief. You know, I always say you can never learn how to cut people's hair out of a book. It's all in the comma of hair and hands. He is sometimes to Maramotwe and, and Mama Kutsi a little bit of a nuisance. He feels like he could do better in terms of investigating cases. He feels like if he had the opportunity, he would be a, a better detective. He has issues with himself that he never talks about. And he, he learned from that and, you know, he learned to love. And, and that's why these people have become so special to him. I was thinking the other day, whilst I was cutting some really big hair, how similar our jobs are. Hmm? Hairdresser and detective. In what way? Well, both of us can totally change someone's life in an afternoon. I think it was very important to set the trend and to establish Mara Motswa's character and to also, you know, introduce uh, um, the world of Botswana to the rest of the world out there. Regardless of what we're doing, it has to be real because otherwise it just doesn't work. You know, the actors don't feel right, it doesn't flow properly. So that, that in a sense, is an important thing for us to achieve. The trickiest part was actually finding the spot we're standing at today because that didn't exist. The whole area was, was a derelict area when we found it. It was complete bush. And in a matter of weeks, we cleared it out, we saved the trees, and we constructed our own mall. What I did was took a lot of the older buildings that we did find in Botswana and used those influences and try to bring it into a contemporary world so that an audience wouldn't think it's a period film but yet tie in with, with the old world of Botswana, which is the beautiful part of Botswana. When I first arrived, what I saw was very monochromatic. And then I started looking a little bit deeper and there were the interesting textures and I've used a lot of the um, local prints. This is Sheshwe. It's just a plain cotton in blue, red and brown that's got prints on it and it's their traditional fabric. I've injected quite a lot of that in. Because they're such well-loved characters, you know, throughout the world you don't want to do a disservice to that fan base and you've got to be very careful, you've got to have the right products, you've got to have the right colour match. We have a house full of wigs and everybody, even the extras, even the day players, have a hairpiece or something attached because in Botswana, it's all about the hair. It's like the hair on your head, millions of them, but God sees the whole haircut. This is one of our generic boards. We actually have two trunks that are down here that are full of hair pieces for when we have big days with extras. Sometimes we have 180 or 200 extras. Um, in one of our episodes, we have a beauty pageant. So for that, we put on probably about 60 hair pieces. 
I want people to enjoy exciting, funny detective stories. And I want them to be surprised by recognizing themselves and their own culture in an African culture. I think that we don't have a lot of real family shows right now. And I think that this is something that the whole family can enjoy. It's just people living lives. This is what the great Mr. Clovis Anderson would call a breakthrough. I think it's a very different, much more positive picture of Africa. Quite a surprising picture for some people who've never been here. This is an African story that is going to go global. And I think the success of this show heralds a new era in drama, maybe.